Minagijep, Kinemage Nene Ireland and Dijnikas, and welcome to this edition of the Social Studies Network. Today's topic, Chapter 2, Section 8, The Columbian Exchange. We'll begin this episode with a letter for John Kabat and his sons. The king, to all to whom, etc., greeting, be it known and made manifest that we have given and granted, as by these presents we give and grant, for us and our heirs, to our well beloved John Kabat, citizen of Venice, and to Louis, Sebastian, and Sancio, sons of said John, and to the heirs and deputies of them and of many and any one of them full and free authority, faculty and power to sail to all parts, regions and coasts of the Eastern, Western and Northern Sea under our banners, flags and ensigns with five ships or vessels or whatsoever burden and quality they may be. And with so many and such mariners and men as they may wish to take with them in the said ships at their own proper costs and charges to find, discover, and investigate whatsoever islands, countries, regions, or provinces of heathens and infidels in whatsoever part of the world placed, which before this time were unknown to all Christians. We have also granted to them and to any of them and to their heirs and deputies of them and of any one of them and have given license to set up our aforesaid banners and ensigns in any town, city, castle, island, or mainland whatsoever newly found by them. And that the before mentioned John and his sons and their heirs and deputies may conquer, occupy, and possess whatsoever such towns, castles, cities, and islands by them thus discovered that they may be able to conquer, occupy, and possess as our vassals and governors, lieutenants, and deputies therein. Acquiring for us the dominion, title, and jurisdiction of the same towns, castles, cities, islands, and mainland so discovered, in such a way, nevertheless, that of all the fruits, profits, emoluments, commodities, gains, and revenues accruing from this voyage, the said John and sons and their heirs and deputies shall be bound and under obligation for their every voyage, as often as they shall arrive at our ports, Port of Bristol, at which they are bound and holden only to arrive, all necessary charges and expenses incurred by them having been deducted to pay to us, either in goods or money, the fifth part of the whole capital gained. We giving and granting to them and to their heirs and deputies that they shall be free and exempt from all payment of customs on all of, and singular the goods and merchandise that they may bring back with them from those places thus newly discovered. And further, we have given and granted to them and to their heirs and deputies that all mainlands, islands, towns, cities, castles, and other places whatsoever discovered by them, however numerous they may happen to be, may not be frequented or visit, visited by any other subjects of ours whatsoever without the license of the aforesaid John and his sons and of their deputies on pain of the loss as well as the ships or vessels daring to sail to these places discovered as of all goods whatsoever, willing and strictly commanding all and singular our subjects as well by land as by sea, that they shall render good assistance to the aforesaid John and his sons and deputies, and that they shall give them all their favor and help as well as fitting out the ships or vessels as in buying stores and provisions with their money and in providing the other things which they must take with them on their said voyage in witness whereof, etc., witness herself at Westminster on the fifth day of March by the king himself. There's a lot to unpack there, um, especially coming through our lens of the 21st century and having a little more common sense and respect for people. So what this document is, is basically a permission slip to Jankabat that him and his kids and their heirs 
they get everything they discover as long as they pay the king money. Uh, it doesn't matter that there were already people living there. Hundreds of millions of people living across Turtle Island, North and South America. And here is some guy living up in a castle thinking he gets to just say, all right, well, that land doesn't count. And there's an important line there, unknown to all Christians, located in this section. At this time, the church was part of governing or the excuse for governing. And the idea was that if you weren't Christian, you didn't count. And therefore, that's why you see them refer to them heathens and infidels. The idea was if you were Christian, you were a good person and you deserve this land. If you worshiped any other kind of spirituality, you, you weren't. Obviously, we know that in the current age that that's a really terrible idea. And we would look at this and say, what is wrong with this king? But that's really where our history has taken us. A large part of the colonization and conquering of the new world was based off of these religious values. And after that point, it also kind of signifies that other people couldn't come in from that same king and claim that land, essentially breaking it up into smaller colonies that were still going to be beholden to the king, because the king is still numero uno in these scenarios. It also shows what little knowledge they had of what they were going to find and how they assumed that it would be based off what they had in Europe. Castles were a thing in Europe and they assumed that, well, if we have them, those other people must have some version of it as well. So these documents are really, really uh, bigoted towards pe things they didn't know and people they didn't know where they just assume, well, we're better than them. And that's going to set up a whole lot of the Colombian exchange. And let us bring up the map of, Gu of the world here. The Colombian exchange, as I zoom out, is going to be the exchange of goods, people, and disease from Europe, Africa, and North and South America. Originally, we hear the name Columbus, which really kind of kicks off the rush of exploration uh, with his landing in the Bahamas in 1492. And you can see the Bahamas is in this region here, um, currently a British territory. But there were many, many, many people already living here. So what they discovered I don't really know. Um, they discovered other people and other cultures and civilizations. But as you noticed in that previous document, it was more like, yeah, those don't count. We are the, we are the culture. We are the civilization. When in reality, those cultures and civilizations had existed since time immemorial already throughout the New World and the Caribbean, which was part of the New World. Uh, Originally, a lot of the Spanish investigation is going to be in this area. They're going to start around the Caribbean where they know where people are, um, northern tip of South America, and then coming through Central America and Mexico. And we'll cover what we need to cover of those conquests and colonizations um, and speak about the impact that will have it on the people there. But let's be real. There, the impact is very negative as many of the indigenous people were exposed to diseases that they had no immunities to. If we've learned anything in a pandemic, that's a big problem. In fact, we get to the point later on where the spread of that disease was not just accidental, it was intentional. 
So let's come back to our text. Section eight, the Colombian exchange. And this is the document that we just read. So if you wanna find your link, uh, you can see where it's from here. I'm gonna read this text to you, but um, questions be thinking, how did exploration change the world? And how did the Colombian exchange impact the Europeans, Africans, and American Indians in both positive and negative ways? So that is what the textbook is gonna be asking us. Vocabulary, convergence, it's where two things meet, or two ideas, or two cultures. The Colombian exchange, obviously named after Columbus, um, is the exchange of people, goods, disease, foods across the new world and old world. And slavery is the owning of people where they don't have the ability or right to earn their freedom. New lands and discoveries. After using the widget above to decode the document, what predictions can you make about European explorers and their rulers? What were their attitudes towards other people in the places they discovered? Well, you kind of heard that in my initial uh, editorialization as I kind of broke down the letter to John. You see on this map, the voyages of Columbus. When I was a student, many, many, many moons ago, they taught us this whole ridiculous song about in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, as if he had discovered a place that no one existed. And when you're young and ignorant of the facts, like, wow, that must've been crazy. But you start re realizing that, how do you discover a place that already exists? It would be like me walking in tomorrow morning into SCA and saying, hey, I've discovered this place. I'm gonna plant my flag. It's mine now. Somehow, Mrs. Hotchkiss is going to have a problem with me claiming the school as my own, I think, pretty certain. You can see that there were multiple voyages and not one of them lands in the United States. Although it does come into Puerto Rico, which is part of the United States, it is along that area. But the mainland current 50 states never touched by Columbus. Um, South America is, Central America definitely is, but he's mostly in the Caribbean. And you can see that it's, it takes a variety of routes, largely from Spain back here, because Spain is the one paying for them. You can see Africa here. These voyages largely avoid Africa. So we know that at this point, he's not bringing slaves from Africa, which will come later on in the story. Um, there will be slaves coming from the Caribbean going back here as they kidnapped members of the Taino people and dragged them back to Europe to both serve them and to be as curiosities. As Europeans continued to explore, they encountered new and exciting places, which is an interesting description of, well, us, but also new people, again, us and our cousins and other Native nations. The patent on the previous page shows an example of the Europeans' perspective on these new people and places. But what about the thoughts of the natives and that the Europeans encountered? How did they feel about these newcomers that came to explore, and in some cases, take their land and their resources? Let's change some cases to most cases. Columbus's travels to the Western Hemisphere had a profound impact on the world. The convergence, which is the process of two or more things coming together of the new world and old world eventually changed the lives of the American Indians. Eventually is not the answer. They were kidnapped on the first voyage, six of them, according to this text and brought back. Um, so that's not an eventual, that's a, it's the now thing. Columbus made four trips to the Western hemisphere between 1492 and 1506. During his first trip, there was only a little contact between the Europeans and the island natives called Tainos. Some goods were traded and six Tainos were kidnapped, enslaved and taken back to Spain. On Columbus's next voyage, however, he had much more of an agenda. He searched for gold, spoiler alert, he 
forced other people to search for gold for him and other treasured goods. But he didn't find much because this wasn't an area full of gold. That, this led to the enslavement of about 1,600 American Indians who he believed were hiding the riches. 500 more were taken back with him to Spain to be put into slavery there. Only about 300 made it to Spain. Slavery is a system in which powerful people buy and sell other human beings who are then forced to work without pay and human rights. And as, as an editorial, I don't like the term powerful people. Uh, that makes them sound too noble. Uh, slavery is never a good thing. And while it may not be the popular opinion of everyone, I will editorial editorialize that slavery is bad. Um, obviously, if we're taking that many and so only a few hundred made it to Spain, what happened to the rest? And that might be something worth researching. No, I can make some assumptions along the way here. As more exploration and discoveries happened in the Americas, Europeans began to demand the resources available to make their own lives better. This sparked the transfer of people, plants, and animals between both Eastern and Western hemispheres across the Atlantic Ocean. This transfer was known as the Columbian Exchange. You see it goes from Europe, Africa to the New World, and then back from the New World to Europe. You can see that to England, and that's going to represent Europe here, squash, pumpkins, turkeys, peanuts, potatoes, tomatoes, corn, peppers, tobacco, pineapples, cacao, bean, and vanilla all start here. Those are indigenous products um, to, native to the New World that suddenly end up over there. From Europe to Africa and Africa to the Americas, onions, olives, turnips, coffee beans, peaches, grains, livestock, and diseases. Diseases are gonna be a huge one. Um, because if the tyranny of the conquerors wasn't bad enough, disease wipes out a lot of people very quickly. Um, huge percentages, far greater percentages than we even see right now with the COVID-19 outbreak and pandemic. Eventually, many more American Indians were forced into slavery and made to collect gold. They did not collect enough, they were punished, often by getting their hands cut off. When sugar cane was brought to the islands of the Caribbean from Europe, the American Indians were made to work on the large farms that raised it. Sugar grew in popularity in Europe, so the Europeans had to find a way to make enough to meet the growing demand. As more sugar cane was planted and grown in the Americas, more workers were needed to harvest the crop. American Indians suffered greatly from enslavement. Surprise, surprise. They were forced to perform long hours of grueling work in the hot sun. They contracted and died from European diseases from which they had no immunities. This led Europeans to search for a new workforce. Slavery existed for thousands of years around the world, but not on such a massive scale. The Europeans traveled to West Africa, enslaved many people and took them to North, Central and South America, forcing them to work on the plantations that provided these products sugarcane, rice, cotton, indigo, grown in the Western Hemisphere. This was not merely an economic exchange between continents, but a tragedy that exacted a huge toll on human cultures. When you're wiping huge numbers of people off the planet or off out of their homelands, that is going to be a huge, huge damage done to the uh, original cultures, whether it be in West Africa, or here in, on Turtle Island. Um, there are some names that would be really nice for you to look up on your own. Um, if you wanna hear more about what it was like for the indigenous people, there is a contemporary of Columbus by the name of Bartolome de las Casas. Uh, you may look that up and read about it. I will tell you it is not, it's not a nice story. Um, you might want to check with your parents on it just to be cool with it. Maybe they can share that with you as well. Um, because this tr the word tragedy far, far, far undersells just how horrible it was. Um, I don't know that we can really put our brains around it because we don't have these same experiences that would have been, here comes these random people that we have no idea speaking a different language 
all of a sudden putting us into slavery, killing us, killing our families, doing other really bad things, and then bringing diseases that are killing most of our family members. Um, I, I won't tell you that I can imagine what it's like because I can't. All right, we are now reaching the end of this reading. Um, there will be, there are two activities that are listed here. Each of these will be in the Google assignment. You will be chose, you will choose one of them um, as part of the assignment. So you choose whichever one you want. Um, we will kind of gather some of these answers and I will share them with you without names. Um, when we get to the review section. So at this point, you should return to the Google Classroom to get your assignment. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me during office hours, during our live stream, or email me at mireland at psychchipschool.net. Hope you all have a minute. Gizhigad. Mama P.